All right, so we're diving into peptides this time, uh -huh. specifically CJC twelve ninety five DDC and epimorlin. Yeah, I think if you're listening to this deep dive, you're probably already interested and familiar with them at least a little bit. Right. But we're going to unpack how they work, what they do, what they might be able to do, yeah, and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, it's interesting because both of them yeah. are considered growth hormone secretagogues, but they have very different okay. mechanisms of action and different effects. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So let's start with CJC 1295 DDC. Okay. What makes this one stand out? Why is this one unique? What should we know about it? So CJC 1295DD is basically like a long-lasting signal that tells your pituitary gland to release more growth hormone. Okay. And it does this by mimicking a naturally occurring hormone called growth hormone releasing hormone, or GHRH. Okay. And the really interesting part is the DDC part of the name. Right. Which stands for drug affinity complex. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah. And that's what gives it its long duration of action. So basically the d -C component allows the CJC 1295 to bind to proteins in your bloodstream, and that gives it a really long half-life. Hmm. So instead of needing frequent injections like some other peptides, you might only need one or two doses per week. Oh, wow. Well, okay. To keep those growth hormone levels elevated. That's pretty efficient. Yeah. So when we're talking about this sustained release of growth hormone, then are we really talking about the benefits that people think about when they think about growth hormone? You know, yeah. like what's it really doing? Yeah. So while increased muscle mass is definitely a well-known effect of growth hormone, there's a lot more to it. Okay. Because growth hormone is involved in cell regeneration and metabolism and even how well we sleep. Okay. So CJC 1295DF, by boosting those GH levels, can tap into those pathways and lead to a whole range of benefits. So faster recovery, right. after workouts, improved sleep quality, and maybe even some anti-aging effects. Anti-aging. Okay, now I'm really interested. Yeah. So growth hormone plays a role in collagen production, which is essential for skin elasticity. Right. And, you know, that youthful glow. Okay. So by keeping growth hormone levels elevated, CJC 1295DT might help promote collagen synthesis, which could mean healthier, more resilient skin. Wow. Of course, more research is needed in this area. Sure. But the early findings are promising. That's pretty amazing. I mean, so we're not just talking about building muscle. We're talking about maintaining that vitality. Yeah. As we age. Exactly. That's really cool. Yeah. But let's uh, let's talk about the other side of that. Sure. What about the side effects? Right. So that's important to consider. Yeah. Um, with CJC 1295 DDC, yeah. the side effects are typically mild and temporary. Okay. The most common one is water retention, okay. which is often associated with increased growth hormone levels. Mm -hmm. Some people might experience mild joint pain. Okay. And in rare cases, there could be nausea or lightheadedness. Gotcha. But these are generally transient. Okay, so it sounds like the downsides are pretty manageable. What about dosage? So if somebody's considering this, what is the typical... Yeah, so... The standard protocol usually involves one to two milligrams once or twice a week. Okay. However, yeah. it's important to remember that everyone's different. Of course. And what works for one person might not be ideal for another. Right. So consulting with a healthcare professional is absolutely essential Makes sense. to determine the best dosage. Personalized guidance. Exactly. Now let's talk about ipamorelin. Okay. How is this different? Yeah. So this is where it gets really interesting. Okay. So while... CJC 1295 DAC provides that long lasting growth hormone elevation. Okay. Epimorelin is more about targeted boosts. Okay. It works by mimicking the body's natural growth hormone releasing signals. Okay. But in a very selective way. Okay, so it's a little bit more precise. Exactly. Okay. Epimorelin triggers the release of growth hormone without also increasing levels of other hormones like cortisol or prolactin. Oh, okay. And that's a big deal. Because those hormones, when elevated, can lead to unwanted side effects like sleep disturbances or mood swings. So it's like a sniper. It's going right for what it wants and not okay. hitting no. anything else. Yeah. Okay, cool. No collateral damage. Now, what about the duration of action? So if it doesn't have that DDI component, does it wear off really quickly? Yeah, that's a key difference. Okay. If Morlin has a much shorter half-life compared to CJC. Okay. So it gets cleared from the body more quickly. Okay. And that's why it often requires more frequent dosing. Okay. Maybe even a couple of times a day to maintain its effects. So it's like the sprinter, whereas the other one is the marathon runner. I like that analogy. Yeah. And just like a sprinter needs to refuel more often. Right. Ipromorlin needs more frequent doses okay. to keep those growth hormone pulses going. So then in terms of benefits, do we see a similar profile to CJC? 
In many ways, yes. Okay. Ipamorelin has also been studied for its potential to boost lean muscle growth, okay. enhance fat loss, and improve sleep quality. Yeah. It's also being explored for its anti-aging properties, although like CJC 1295, DT, more research is needed in that area. So similar potential benefits. Yeah. But the thing that sticks out to me is that it's a lot safer. Yes. At least in terms of side effects. We were talking about how it doesn't really touch those other hormones. Right. Cortisol and prolactin. Is that really how it is? Yeah. Because of its selectivity, okay. it tends to have a very favorable side effect profile. Wow. So the most common ones reported are mild headaches. Okay. Sometimes a bit of irritation at the injection site. Mm -hmm. and occasionally some slight water retention. Okay. But again, these are generally mild and transient. So minimal downsides. Yeah. It sounds pretty good. Then why would we even bother with CJC 1295 DAC? That's a great question and something we'll explore in more detail in part two. Okay. But the truth is epimorelin excels at providing those targeted growth hormone boosts. Okay. But CJC 1295 DEC offers a different kind of advantage. It's like setting the stage for epimorelin to work its magic. Oh, so they actually yeah. work together. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. I want to learn more about that. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Stay tuned for part two. Right. Where we'll unpack that synergy. Okay. Delve deeper into the safety considerations yeah. and even explore the legal landscape surrounding peptides. Oh, very cool. All right. I'm excited for that. Yeah. It's going to get even more interesting. Awesome. All right. So we're back. Yes. And we're going to dig a little deeper into CJC 1295 DDC and Epimorlin. Okay. Um. Last time we talked about how they work and their potential benefits and their safety profiles and all that stuff. Yeah. But let's talk about safety a little bit more in depth. Sure. You know, anytime we're talking about something that could affect hormones, right. I think safety has to be a top priority. Absolutely. So starting with CJC 1295 DC. Okay. Um, we talked about, you know, water retention and joint pain and nausea. Right. Is there anything else that people should be aware of? I think it's important to remember that everybody's different. Yeah, of course. What one person tolerates well, yeah. another might not. Right. So I think it's always a good idea to start with a lower dose. Right. See how your body responds. Sure. And if you experience any unusual or concerning symptoms, obviously stop using it. Yeah. And consult your healthcare provider. Right. Of course. Immediately. What about long term use? So we're talking about, yeah. you know, is there a risk to using it for months and months yeah the research on long-term use is still yeah. somewhat limited sure um short-term studies suggest that it's generally well tolerated okay. but we just need more data to fully understand the potential effects of prolonged use sure i think it's probably wise to cycle on and off yep. peptides right it's just giving your body a break to be on the safe side just be on the safe side now with ipramorlin yeah we talked about how it has a remarkably low incidence of side effects yes especially when you compare it to other ghrps correct is it considered safer than CJC 1295 DAC. Well, again, it goes back to what we were talking about with the selectivity. Right. So it targets growth hormone release right. without affecting cortisol or prolactin. Right. So that gives it a real advantage in terms of minimizing yeah, those right. unwanted side effects. So less headaches, less joint pain, less risk of those hormonal imbalances. Potentially, yes. That sounds pretty good. But again, yeah. individual responses can vary. Of course. Just because one peptide is generally well tolerated right. doesn't mean everyone will have the same experience. Of course. So again, personalized guidance from a qualified healthcare professional right. is crucial. That brings up a good point, actually, because, you know, finding in a doctor who is knowledgeable about peptides, mm. I imagine it's not. Yeah. It's a relatively new field. It's kind of specialized. How would somebody go about finding a doctor? Right. It, you're right. It can be a little tricky. Yeah. Peptide therapy is a rapidly evolving field. One resource that you might find helpful is the American Akanji of Anti-Aging Medicine, or A4M. Right. They have a directory of physicians okay. who specialize in age management medicine. Okay. And a lot of those practitioners are well-versed in peptide therapy. So, so if you're interested, check out that directory. Yeah. It could be a good starting point. Absolutely. Now, what about the legal landscape surrounding peptides? Yeah. Because it seems like there's a lot of gray area. You're not wrong. Yeah. The legal status of peptides can be 
complex right and it varies depending on the specific peptide right. and how it's marketed and used mm -hmm. so in the u.s for example oh. peptides are often classified as research chemicals okay meaning they're not fda approved for specific medical treatments okay however okay. they can be legally prescribed by licensed healthcare professionals okay. for off-label use off-label use what does that mean so off-label use means a medication is being prescribed for a purpose that's not officially approved by the FDA. Gotcha. It's a common practice in medicine, especially when dealing with newer therapies or substances like peptides. So even though CJC-1295, DAAC, and ipamorelin, hmm. they might not have FDA approval right. for muscle growth or anti-aging or whatever. Correct. A doctor can still prescribe them if they think it's in the best interest of the patient. Exactly. Okay. But it's important to emphasize yeah. that off-label use should always be done under the guidance of, course. of a qualified healthcare professional right. who right. can assess the potential risks and benefits right. Makes sense. for each individual. So let's talk about how these are actually administered. Yeah. So we call them peptides, but what does that mean? Right. So both CJC-1295, DAC, and ipomorelin are usually administered through subcutaneous injections, right. and meaning they're injected just under the skin. Cool. Common injection sites are the abdomen, thighs, or upper arms. So like how insulin is injected. That's right. Okay. The needles used are very small and fine. Okay. So most people find the injections relatively painless. Can people give themselves these injections or do they need to see a medical professional? With a little guidance and practice, uh, most people can comfortably handle the injections themselves. Okay. Your healthcare provider can teach you the proper technique. Right. There are also lots of resources online like videos and tutorials to help you learn. That's good to know. Yeah. What about cost? I'm guessing these aren't cheap. You're right. The cost can vary quite a bit yeah. depending on the specific peptide the dosage and where you're getting them from. Right. It's important to prioritize quality and safety when sourcing peptides, though. Yeah, for sure. So make sure you're getting them from a reputable supplier right. who adheres to strict manufacturing and quality control standards. Do your research. Absolutely. Compare prices, ask we questions. Could, exactly. It's yeah. your health we're talking about. Right. So investing in high quality peptides yeah. from a trusted source is absolutely worth it. All right, so we covered a lot in this part. We did. Safety considerations, long-term use, finding a doctor, how they're administered, yeah. the cost and all that. Absolutely. But as always, yes. we are not medical professionals. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is for educational purposes only. This is just for education. Yes. Consult with your own healthcare provider before starting any new therapy or supplement. Now, I'm curious, given all these potential benefits. Yeah. And the relatively low risk of side effects. Right. Could these become more mainstream in the future? It's an interesting thought, right? Yeah. The future of peptides yeah. and their role in health and wellness yeah. is definitely a topic worth exploring. All right. So stay tuned for part three. Yes. We're going to dig into that. Right, we'll dive into that and more. Awesome. Okay. So we are back for the final part yes. of our deep dive into CJC 1295 DAC. Mm-hmm. And ipamorelin. Okay. We've covered so much, you know, the science and the benefits and the safety and all that. Yeah. But I want to get to that question. You posed at the end of part two about the future of peptides. Yes. It's really fascinating to think about where this field could go. Right. I mean, right now we've mostly been talking about these peptides for muscle growth and fat loss and right. things like that. But what if we yeah. zoomed out and looked at the bigger picture? Okay, yeah. Zoom okay. me out. What's the big picture? Okay, so imagine a future where peptides like CJC-1295, DAC, and epimorlin aren't just seen as tools for yeah. bodybuilders or athletes. Okay. What if they become part of mainstream healthcare? Oh, wow. Used to proactively optimize health and prevent age-related decline. So we're not waiting for things to break down. Exactly. We're keeping the systems running smoothly. Yeah, it's a shift from reactive medicine to proactive. Right health optimization, yeah. and peptides with their ability to target specific pathways in the body right. could be key players in that transformation. It makes you wonder, could they eventually just become as commonplace as like taking a daily vitamin? It's definitely possible, especially as research continues to validate their safety and efficacy. Right. And as production methods become more refined and costs come down, right. they could become accessible to a much wider range of people. That's pretty amazing to think about, you know, that growth hormone optimization could just become a regular part of our right. 
health practices. Exactly. It's not just about living longer. It's about living better. Right. So extending that health span. Right. The number of years. Yes. The number of years we live in good health. In good health with vitality and and sharp minds yeah that's what i like i like the yeah adding life to years not years to life exactly it's about quality not just quantity yeah and it sounds like peptides could be the key to unlocking that i think so this is making me think about aging in a totally different way yeah are there any other really exciting developments that you see coming down the pike Oh, the research pipeline is overflowing. Really? Scientists are exploring peptides that could target all sorts of things. Neurodegenerative diseases, metabolic disorders, even cancer. So you're talking about cognitive function, Alzheimer's, obesity. Pergicity potentially even. Cancer. Fighting cancer. Wow. And what's particularly fascinating to me is the potential for personalized peptide therapy. Oh, wow. So as we learn more about how our genes influence our response to different treatments, okay. we could tailor peptide therapies to each person's unique needs. So it's like precision medicine on a whole Sadly, level. It really is. Um, and as our understanding of the human body and its intricate processes continues to grow, yeah. I have no doubt that peptides will play an increasingly vital role in shaping the future of healthcare. Well, this has been an amazing journey. It has. Exploring this world of CJC, 1295DC, and Ipamorlin. Yes, it's been a pleasure. And like we've said many times, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. When it comes to this world of peptide therapy. And, yeah. you know, we've learned so much. We've talked about the science and the benefits and the safety and the future possibilities. It's a lot to take in. It is. As always, though we are not medical professionals. Correct. So this is just for educational purposes. Yes. Always consult with a qualified healthcare provider before starting any new therapy or supplement regimen. Absolutely. Yeah. But we hope that this deep dive has given you some good knowledge yeah. and sparked your curiosity. For sure. To learn more about this stuff. Yeah. Keep learning. Keep asking questions. Yeah. It's a rapidly evolving field. So It is. Stay curious. Stay informed. Absolutely. And always prioritize your health and well-being. Above all else. That's it for this deep dive. We'll see you next time.